Hi there. So I wanted to pop in today and give you guys a special episode to keep you on track, keep you inspired, and more importantly, hopeful and resilient. So you come out on the other side of this with your business still intact. If you still have a business, your health, because that's what I specialize in, um, and more. So today I'm going to be talking about primarily what I do. And that's only because I feel like my whole life has been preparing me for this. Uh, there's been several incidences in my life where um, unexpectedly I've had a health crisis and had to not work in the capacity that I had imagined. And what I do during this and what I continue to do to keep my health resilient. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't say that do exactly as I say and you're not going to get coronavirus or your your health is going to be immaculately perfect or um, do these exercises and you'll never have low back pain again like no one can guarantee this and no one can say this unless maybe they come out with a virus uh, you know um, a vi uh, what is it called like a shot um, but even that's not completely 100% uh, infallible but what I can give you is tips and advice so you have more hope and sometimes just moving from uh, a grounded hopeful state away from a ramped up stressed and anxious mindset is the best thing you can do for your immunity your business and more and I, I say business because I know a lot of you listening are yoga teachers or other small business owners some of you may be employees and are at home right now and uh, I know finances can be a source of stress this is my own pattern my own work um, I this going through this process of the unknown and not sure what's going to happen with my schedule for example and um, utilizing creative methods to still um, give my value and um, help people but not in maybe such a, a in-person facet that has been my work for the last um, couple years and I'm happy to share that with you guys because if you're stressed and worried about your finances, then that puts your nervous system into the fight or flight response, which will then lower your immunity and make you more vulnerable for things like the coronavirus and such. So I will sh share with you what I do, the work that I do, because it is, is my ongoing work. Um, it's what I'm doing right now to stay grounded and centered. So some of you know my story, how a couple years ago I had, um, was diagnosed early with cancer and had to have an unexpected surgery. Um, so at that time, I really had to evaluate my life and my business. Um, I had just found out that I had a genetic mutation, so the likelihood of me being diagnosed with cancer again sometime in my life, uh, lifetime is high. And a couple years ago, I really had to assess, okay, if I have to go through another surgery again, and in fact, that surgery, I, I will be going through another surgery again. Um, more on that later, preventatively. Uh, how can I still serve the people, my clients, my patients, my customers, in a way that I'm still giving them great value so they can continue to have hope in their life, improve their health and wellness, reduce pain, reduce stress and anxiety, and have more energy, how can I do all that if for some reason I can't be present with them one-on-one -on -one in person? So I started this investigation journey um, a few years ago. Uh, and it's funny because now it's being really tested. And I, I'm not quite ready, I'm not quite there. My business um, 
is still very much reliant upon me being out there physically present, teaching yoga classes, leading trainings, uh, doing my one-on-one -on -one sessions here in the She Shed. But already I had made some changes. As some of you know, I moved out of my commercial leased space into uh, my home office and I started releasing more online programs. And so my work over the next couple of weeks, I'll give you the business side of things and then we'll go more into my health routine that supports and enables me to continue to do this. Um, uh, I just have ramped up more of the online world. And um, what I'm currently offering my patients is the option to do online sessions. Now, many of you know, um, I do a lot of manual work here in my physical space. Um, it's very important to me. I love to get my hands on people. However, it's not the only way. It's not the only way to work with the nervous system. It's not the only way to reduce pain and anxiety. And I think at this time, it's really important to explore for yourself you know, if you're going to a lot of uh, practitioners that you go to in person and they put your hands on you, on you, you know, now's the time to really explore your own innate healing. Not to say that manual work uh, doesn't have value, because it does. Um, I go to my own body work people um, and acupuncture sessions, and physical therapy sessions, um, in person myself however and I still continue to go um, when we're all back out functioning and such and I'm still going right now one-on-one -on -one. Um, however what can we do to supplement this what can we do to really dig deeper and learn more about our patterns patterns of how we live patterns of how we think and move that tighten our tissue that restrict the blood flow, that cause more restrictions, that lead to the pain, that lead to the fatigue and reduced energy, right? That is the, the, the key and the source because if we can get to the root of those issues and work on those issues, then your tissue and your muscles are gonna be gripping less, tacked down less. You will have more freedom of movement. And so then when you go to your practitioners, um, you will be able to take things to the next level, right? So what can we do in this space right now um, if you can't leave your house, right? And, and what can you do for your, your business as well? So a lot of it comes down to both of those is, is mindset. It's the ability to stay grounded during this time, the ability to um, tap into your creative resources. So if you're stressed out, if you're anxious, if you're completely consumed with CNN, uh, worries and fears and listening to everyone else's complaints and fears and worries, then you're just gonna cycle and you're just gonna spin in your health and in your business, right? But if you can stay aware, so stay, you know, I, I, this is what I do personally, is in the morning I go about my routine. And right now, because I can't get to the gym, I can't get to the yoga classes, my routine is taking the dogs for the walk, uh, first thing. Then I come back and I do my therapeutic yoga practice at home. Um, today is a strength training day that I usually go to the gym, so I'm gonna do some home strength training exercises. Now, if you're interested in seeing exactly what those are, the yoga practice, the strength training, I, have, I do have a lot of programs available for you, and I'm happy to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we can get on and I can show you all this. I can look at your alignment uh, via video, right? So there's still a ton of work that can be done, so just reach out to me. Head to the show notes, I'll put some links in there. 
Now, um, then, after I do that, um, I, I have, uh, well, I also have like a wellness routine in terms of supplements and products right now that I'm really um, stepped up the game just to keep my, um, my body hydrated with lots of nutrients and um, barriers, so to speak. Now, I'm not a functional medicine expert yet. That's, uh, that's on my radar, <laughs> so, you know, coming soon. And um, I'm not a medical doctor. So, truthfully, I don't know, like, medically, there is some research. It's not completely conclusive as to, you know, supplements, wellness products, that sort of thing, like, for, you know how effective they are but for me um, I like to believe that they are and have hope and that helps to keep my nervous system smooth and even keeled and more in the rest and digest state than the fight or flight which reduces um, and immunity anyways so there's um, essential oils that I cycle through there's some um, pre-made wellness like supplements that I cycle through and uh, uh, like nutrition things that I'm really doing to make sure that I'm getting all of the and my family too to make sure that um, we're all getting the the nutrients we need like I last week I um, interviewed Devin Ryerson on the podcast I'm using his um, new greens supplement I'm doing uh, I'm making smoothies with um, uh, I'm adding green powder in there I'm adding um, other types of supplements in there um, lots of uh, superfoods in the smoothies and um, I'm making them chocolate because my daughter a lot of them are chocolate because my daughter loves chocolate and she'll actually drink it <laughs> So, um, I'm, you know, throughout the day, I'm doing that sort of thing. So morning, I'm doing some things. Afternoon, I'm having a smoothie. Evening, I'm getting another cycle of uh, nutrient-high superfoods, supplements into my body. So I'm having this round, and then before I go to bed, I'm taking a couple of supplements. So I'm having this round-the-clock um, barrier and, and um, immunity boosting system going on. Um, and then at the same time, I'm cycling off because I don't want my body to be completely reliant on them and I don't want to overdo at the same time. And the protocol is not rigid and it's not strict, strict and it's not fixed. It's changing day to day dependent upon how I'm feeling. So um, I can give you some examples, again, if you're interested in the specific products that I'm using. A lot of them are Young Living, from Young Living, um, and uh, various protein companies and um, superfood products. So I can give you them. It's just, I'm not gonna give you an exact protocol because it, that is really individualized. But I can help guide you through that, no problem. So again, that's another option. If you wanna work with me, I can help develop this immunity boosting protocol and I can and again I cannot guarantee that you're completely invincible however I can give you hope that you're going to decrease your likelihood of being more vulnerable right so that's what I've learned about going through and working with um, a genetic mutation where there is a lot of unknowns right and that's that's the part that's um, I really learned a lot about the last couple of years is how to de-risk my business, how to de-risk my health, make my health, my business more resilient without increased stress and not worrying about it all the time. And that's the principles that I'm really relying on right now to get me through the day to day. And that's also, I, I strongly believe, will help to keep my business afloat. Yes, it'll probably take a hit. Um, I'm hoping smaller, um, and I'm hoping that um, all these programs that I'll be offering you um, that are variations of what I do in person, because um, that was my plan anyways, was to do more online, offer more online, 
to de-risk my business and also help my health because I am one person and physically and time-wise, I'm only limited to a number of sessions that I can do in one day, a number of yoga classes that I can teach in one week or trainings that I can lead in one month, right? And as a small business owner, a yoga teacher, a practitioner, you're in the same boat. There's only so much that you can do before either your energy or your health will start to sacrifice. So I know some of you intuitively have been already thinking along these lines, but now is the time to step it up. And I know in the back of your mind that worry and fear might come in. Well, I don't know if I have the tools and resources right now. I wasn't ready right now. I'm stuck at home right now. All these objections and obstacles might come into your head. But if you write them down, get them on paper. What's your worst fears, whether it be for your business? What's your worst fears for your health? Get them on the paper. Write them down. And one thing to really help alleviate those fears and worries is sometimes I go to worst case scenario. What happens if this um, pandemic and businesses and everything are closed or you know functioning a lot less for a couple months? What happens then? What happens if worst case, um, I realize that I've come in contact or my daughter has come in contact or my husband is sick, right? Worst case, what happens then? If you figure out a plan for your worst case scenario and you write it down, just having that plan sometimes is comfort itself and you realize, oh, it was kind of ends, end of the world, doomsday thought process I was getting myself into that was spinning. But when I have a solution, I realize it's not really the end of the world. It's not really, yes, this is not ideal, but I can still get through it and I can get out on the other side. And through all this, you know, it's not that saying that you have to look for the good in everything, right? This might not be one of those scenarios that people find or end up in a, a better place because of this. Some of us it will, right? Some of us will teach us a lot about our business, teach us the gaps of our health, the gaps in our business that really needed plugging to fill up, to be more resilient, and that will make us stronger. And that will make us better in the future. You know, and maybe some of the good is that our, our, um, the world itself gets to rest with less people traveling and commuting. Uh, the pollution will decrease. We get to spend more time at home with family, connecting with those that are important to us, um, really sending messages of hope and, um, inspiration to others so we stay connected as a human race connecting more um, getting to know yourself better so there is a lot of good that's coming out of this however I know sometimes that if you always seek for the good in a non ideal scenario like if you're going through a health crisis there might not be that silver lining and that's okay because it's just life life what I learned from a coach I've been learning a lot from uh, Brooke Castillo is life is 50 50 some of it is gonna be good and pleasurable and happy and joyful and some of it is going to you're gonna have those uncomfortable emotions fear disappointment anger grief the important thing is learning how to be comfortable with those emotions, right? That's been my work, actually. That was my, um, you know, the word of the year or whatever. So that, that was my word for 2020 is being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And um, so all of us right now are in that position. And it's, you do have a choice. You have a choice 
to feel it. Feel all the feels. And learn how to process through it. So you're not stuck in the fight or flight worrying about your business, worrying about your health, worrying about those that you care about, right? And so then you're spinning and nothing productive is gonna come from that. You're gonna take action from a place of anger and fear versus action from being grounded. So the other choice is seeking out people to help you, like myself, or other programs to help you process this, to help you get grounded, to get connected to a routine that will keep things less volatile. And that's the other reason why I have my routine because there's a lot of unknown, there's a lot of changes, but if I can keep some sense of normalcy and I have an awareness of what I have control over, the supplements I'm using, food I'm eating, the thoughts I'm thinking or choosing to focus on, right? Sometimes the thoughts just come up, but I process through, or I can sit there and get stuck in negativity, right? So you do have some choices, even though what's going around you, you there's a lot that you don't have control over. You don't have control over what's gonna be open or closed. You don't have control over that person that you came in contact with, who they were in contact with, or where even they were the last week, right? So you have some choices to make, but the only way to really realize the choices that you have at hand right now are to take a step back and slow down. The good news is, is that if you start these skills and this awareness now, they will improve and get better with over time. So when this pandemic clears, because it will, history shows that we've gone through past um, scenarios um, similar to this, just different because the time was different um, and we've made it through, right? Um, so when we do get through this, then you're gonna have new skills, more awareness, more strength, more resiliency, more coping mechanisms. So in the future, if something happens to you personally, if we go through another uh, crisis as a society, if something happens to your family, your health, your business, you will have the skills to ride that wave as well right? So that's what I leave you with today is creating a routine to create some kind of normalcy for your health, for your wellness, for your nervous system. Be gentle with yourself. Carve out the space to process the emotions of fear, disappointment, worry, all anger, all that. Carve out the space to move through it. Be gentle with yourself. Create spaces of safety where you feel safe and have some control over some things. So right now, my, my she shed, my home are, are spaces of safety. I, I feel that I can let down my guard. I can focus on my work. I can focus on my family, I can stay grounded, I can stay connected, right? So your nervous system can de, you know, downgrade, as they say, or decompress, or soften. And stay connected with others. If we cannot get physically in-person connections, know that there's alternative ways. And you have to feel, you have to think creatively for your health and for your business. And this ability to see outside the box, to stay inspired, to stay motivated. Again, you'll come out on this with new sets of skills and you'll be able to hit the ground running when things start moving again, because they will, right? And so if you need help with any of this, I'm here for you. Um, I'll try to, you know, keep showing up as much as possible with ways that um, just are coming to me. 
and I do have programs. So I have workshop, I have different price points, I have a couple free things that you can watch online. I have um, low, low, low cost uh, workshops that you can get. Uh, run, one right now on reducing aches and pains and, and um, stress. I'm going to be releasing uh, a meditation, uh, meditation 101 essentially, on how to uh, meditate to reduce pain in your body and reduce stress and anxiety. I have bigger programs, the Heal Your Low Back Blueprint. Uh, I have a bigger um, uh, all-encompassing program that's going to be ongoing, um, the Ignite Your Wellness Catalyst. I have um, online consultations. So there's many, many ways you can still work with me, one-on-one -on -one or through these other means. So notice the, the reasons or the objections that come up or excuses, right? as to why you should put your health on the back burner. But just know that that's the number one thing you should be doing to keep your everything flowing, right? Your health comes first, put your, your face air mask on first, and then you're gonna be able to continue to help your family. Stay, stay rooted and grounded for your family. And if something happens, worst case, you will have the skills and the tools to help get you through that, right? And I'm here for you. So let me know any questions you might have. Head over to the show notes for links to any of this if you want to get started right away. And um, I will see you soon. So bye for now.